credential or got a postgraduate diploma or doctorate in design thinking. So my approach is slightly different. Uh, it's not the design thinking for product, products or services. It's actually design thinking for managers, leaders, and technopreneurs, which are required in view of the current pandemic. So just to fresh through my background, I'm an engineer, so I changed. So this is uh, basically what I want to discuss the, for tonight. The paradigm shift, that means in another words, if, uh, of, as of now, we don't change the way we think, the keywords is think. Then we will not change the way we do our work and therefore we will not change the way we behave. And then uh, when come to performance, most probably we will lose out to our competitors. So, so now I've written four books because I almost died in 2016 due to uh, overwork. So therefore, now I die not for work, I die to enjoy. Huh? So therefore, I'm semi-retirement. Huh? I'm a young man, I'm an old man. So I'm 65 years old. So I share with you, I cannot teach you because teaching uh, is, uh, I'm not to that standard yet, but sharing, yes, uh, how I went through from an engineer to become a marketeer, then become a, an international consultant and then to the top executive positions, working for one of the richest men on earth. And then eventually I nearly died in 2016. I said, I better, uh, do a semi-retirement and uh, like doing this type of social entrepreneurship that means uh, give some talks and sharing huh, uh, for useful purpose. So now I use the different approach as I mentioned, six A's is very easy to remember. So uh, compared to what the standard design thinking, which talk about empathize, then you define them, you idealize, idolate, then you create the prototype and test. Because I'm on the manager, leadership or leaders and technopreneurs, that means entrepreneurs become brass technology, become technopreneurs. So therefore I will rather use six A's, which starts from awareness. What am I going to present tonight? Then go into alignment, your thinking and my thinking. So are we like-minded uh, or not yet, then we go into action. Show me what are the examples that you can convince me that we have to enter the paradigm shift in order to uh, emerge stronger in view of the COVID pandemic. And then adoption is whether you buy in my ideas or not. And eventually assurance. How can I assure you that uh, what I have shared with you is uh, of practical value? And what is missing even with the design thinking process is the anticipation. So this is what went right or what went wrong, the pain points during this uh, pandemic that people uh, enter into the unknown unknown. So when you enter into a crisis, which is the unknown unknown, the good leader will stand up. The not so good leader become the mediocre. The lousy leader will relinquish. So you can see by the end of this year, who are the real leaders in the industry. And those that survive even stronger is something that we want to learn from them. No? So let's look at the next slide. So I use the very common sense approach so that you can remember it. You don't need to uh, attend courses, but of course, uh, apply what you learned tonight. I hope these two hours give you some inroads into forming up your own ideas about design thinking because design thinking must be for something design thinking for fashion design thinking for an event design thinking for machinability or design thinking for another new career move etc so we use our six senses in design which is your ai artificial intelligence but the last one is common sense which we always forgotten of but thinking is no use unless we can enhance our ability to integrate things or ideas to implement uh, solutions. So McKenzie is famous for strategy, the implementation, they say, well, look for another uh, consulting company that 
does all this implementation. Therefore, if you are in doubt, look for IPMA. <laughs> I'm not selling, but then this is important because I myself, uh, many attempts when I give uh, talk on marketing, somebody asked me, looks like you talk about project management. I said, yeah, marketing without project management is not marketing. Then I give talk about uh, entrepreneurship. Then they said, Casey, at the end of the presentation, looks like you're talking about project management. I said, yeah, an entrepreneur, uh, focus on a few projects like Alibaba and then mix it into um, the best seller. So I said, if you don't convert strategy into projects, then it's difficult to measure. Of course, in no way it's always there, but some of us think too far ahead, right? You want to compete with the number one in the world, but we also know that niche marketing, just like many years ago, we have our own very, very important company called Creative Technology in sound blasting system. They were the number one in terms of sound brass because cheapest and high quality and almost used in most computers. But, well, they uh, decided to diversify a little bit, or we call this concentric diversification, and then lead them into not so uh, focused and they lose their, what we call competitive, competitiveness. So innovation, there are four types, but tonight it's not for me to discuss what are the four types of innovation. And improve is always, people talk about Six Sigma, but Six Sigma is also small projects, don't you think so? Okay, so now I will give a formal definition. It's not taken from books because I, I read books, but I uh, don't uh, like an academic uh, quote unquote. So sometimes I find very uh, surprising when academics, uh, the article or the paper is about five pages, but the references also five pages. So I think, are you copying somebody's idea? Because references cannot have so many. Bibliography can have. So when an external examiner for a PhD student, I think some of the, my students also listening, if you read and quote the reference, almost every references I go through. But if I find out in the main body, that means you're just putting it for the sake of making your thesis become thicker. Because in the real world, we only put what is relevant. This is called the 4% rule, which is very important in design thinking. People buy your product, people attend your class because of the 4%. If you have 20%, you go into a very big market. Some people call this blue ocean strategy, but I call this common sense. Actually, everything is about common sense. It's only the essence of bringing it out. So therefore, in time to come because of the pandemic, you can see that we have to really develop a new uh, pipeline of whole brain human capital. And this is very different from the past because we are talking about the younger generation. The older generation like me with gray hairs, we can do our best as trusted advisor. We cannot run at the same speed. We cannot think at the same speed. My son thinks better than me. My daughter uh, can reason better than me but I have experience I can share with them. Then they actually learn from the experience and they don't need to make the same mistakes. So this is very important. No? So this is why I'm going to discuss design thinking for human capital, which consists of uh, being a manager, being a leader, being a technopreneur. No? That means three things exist at the same time, because why? Manager is the person, leader is the person, technopreneur is the person, but Management, leadership, and technopreneurship are process-driven. So therefore, it actually enhances the organization execution capabilities. So this is the diagram. Some of you may have heard my talk a few months ago. So thinking process is always continuous improving, absorbing, or we actually filter the best and then keep uh, for sharing. So these are my new slides. Uh, on top of what I presented before, the same topic called design thinking for managers, leaders, and technopreneurs. You know, that because of the pandemic, that time was, uh, I think, just started. Uh, so now it's, uh, we hope it's tapering down towards the end of the year. So now you have to really select who are the managers you want to develop. So this become the competent managers. Who are the leaders we want to develop? This become the effective leaders. It means make the right decision. And if you have all three, you become the whole brain entrepreneurs because uh, later on you see this is fulfilling the axioms or the words of wisdom of Peter Trucker, which was the 
modern father of management. No? So uh, we want to divide our organization. We cannot have leaders straight away. So we start with good management practice. This is called box one. So this will bring us from 2020 now to 2023. So I do some consulting with SMEs. I have no uh, wish or although I was uh, with McKinsey looking after the second largest uh, Indonesian company called Cinemas Group in Indonesia as uh, part of the director for uh, design thinking and innovation. But what is important is that this has changed, totally changed. If you ask me again, I go back. Uh, I was there from 1998 to 2006 when they were in deep trouble. They own the band 14 billion cannot return. But now that they have come out of the crisis, then the strategy will be dif different. Oh, but they have to enter another crisis, which is the pandemic crisis. Oh, so therefore, we have to bring in new concept. So box one is bring us up to 2023. Then we have to look at those projects. I think Singapore is the same. We have uh, mega projects, but recently, if you uh, hear, uh, certain projects has to be put on hold and we look at it, no? because uh, you're going to spend a lot of money. But whether this brings the economy of Singapore to the next level, we have to uh, wait and see. So we need to now not only have good managers, but good leaders. I'm talking about company here. Yeah. So effective leadership plus good management practice that bring us to 2026. So these are the SMEs I'm doing some consulting work with. Uh, as I said, I cannot do so many, but only selected ones, which has the potential. That means those are into smart manufacturing uh, because that was my background in computer integrated manufacturing, but now they just changed the name to smart manufacturing and something that I'm familiar with. Uh, and finally, by 2030, 10 years from now, then we need to groom a different breed of entrepreneurship because look at Malaysia, look at uh, Indonesia, or even we have Taiwan uh, audience uh, listening. They all come up from adversity to prosperity. That means they became entrepreneurs. But Singapore, we are, have a comfort level because we find a good job. Like myself, I last started to become an entrepreneur some uh, few years ago. But before that, it was always a corporate man using corporate, set of, uh, using corporate facilities. We don't have to worry uh, from left pocket to right pocket, but now I have to worry for every pocket because I have to give <laughs> salary. Huh? And you have to educate uh, your uh, staff that they are, they are not working for the company, they're working with the company and therefore you to bring in the cash flow as well as the revenue. Huh? So this is what Peter Trucker said some 30 years ago. 30 years ago, the professors will not agree with him. They always tell Peter Trucker, look here, you started as a journalist as a background, but eventually you got your doctorate, you teach uh, at the university and you are the considered as the father of modern management. But this gentleman, if you look at his books, even 30 years ago or 35 years ago, is still valid today. The first book ever written on innovation and entrepreneurship comes from him. So this is what I always believe that when the theory is good, then it will last for a long time. The same thing goes with in search of accidents. People can say, these companies are gone, but those companies that are still surviving still use that very basic principle of in search of accidents. Huh? So to conclude, we use this team that I want to discuss today that those companies that survive uh, after 2020, or I hope the pandemic will be down to a minimum risk level, that they have good managers, they have good leaders, and they have good uh, entrepreneurs which is because they train a lot of other managers. That's why the management is good practice, the leadership. They have trained many successors. Therefore, you don't rely on one or two people, but you have many good uh, C 
sweet people or senior management to take over the company so that they can expand even faster. And entrepreneurship is that their passion to succeed. Oh. So as Peter Tucker says, that management leadership and technopreneurship means those who actually apply technology into their entrepreneur and in their company as entrepreneur like Alibaba, Jack Ma, or of course, always we talk about uh, Bill Gates or Tim Cook from Apple, etc. So these are technopreneurs. Uh, and the future is to have all the three. So they call this the multipreneurs or in some research, because all these three are like our hand, nose and mouth from the same body. Now to come back to the very basic uh, principle of uh, six senses in design thinking. So we have the sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, and the last one is always forgotten common sense. If you know it's going to rain, what you do? Carry umbrella. So therefore now even umbrella is designed differently. If you see from Hong Kong inside, very beautiful pictures or design so that you don't feel boring. You know, it's a gloomy weather, it's raining. And, but when you open up the umbrella, inside the umbrella, you can see very beautiful pictures. No? It's just changed the way you think. No? But more importantly is the thinking process itself must actually enhance our ability to integrate, to implement because we have a good plan, but how to implement the plan. And therefore, if you want to improve again, so innovate and small improvement. So we improve continuously, which is the last equation now. So now let's look at <coughs> design thinking for what? So most of the marketing people will say that I design thinking for customer experience fashion. How come a pillow uh, can cost $300? No? And another pillow, which is a uh, seahorse, uh, which costs uh, only less than $50. But uh, of course, the person who is very rich uh, says, I always have back pain, my neck pain, because uh, uh, I'm pain in the neck. Actually, they are the one that cause the, who's the pain in the neck that cause a lot of problems. So that's why they need the expensive pillow, but a poor man like me, $40 is enough. The seahorse one, and it lasts me a long time, it's, it's tough, and then it will not uh, deform. But they buy the expensive pillow because it's from the shape of your neck. Oh. So that is what we say, fitness for purpose. Oh. You design for the purpose it is supposed to serve which is the common sense. Huh? So now let's move uh, a little bit faster. Now the momentum is up. So we talk about in design thinking, also you have to boost up the momentum. This house, beautiful. I love to stay there, but you know how much it is right? beyond my means. So therefore, uh, government design a HDB flat for people like myself to stay huh? because it's practical. Huh? Don't spend much money, pay off uh, after uh, 10 years, and then now you can save the money to do other things. Now, this is also a very beautiful TV chair. Oh, I knew this because I have one before, but now I buy Osim because the TV chair is no relevance to me. I need massage. If I tell my wife I go for massage, I'll be a dead person when I come back, right? So therefore I told my wife, I want to buy a massage chair. So my mother-in-law says that I already bought it for you for your birthday. So I said, thank you, my mother-in-law, but I said, I use your credit card, you know? because I bought one for myself too. Uh, that is called design thinking for spending your money. Huh? Okay. Now fashion design, of course, uh, they have the real Chanel uh, origin and they are the, what I call imitation one huh? or the fake one, uh, but don't go to Paris, you'll be arrested because they don't know which one is real, which one is fake, huh? I don't know. Yeah. And of course, perfume huh? uh, for the ladies, so design thinking for the smell. So this is where Cindio is always at the forefront because that's their core competence. And of course, our iPhone, uh, David Kelly now, of course, he leave it to his successor, uh, which is part of your idea, design thinking for your Apple products, huh? which is sound. And this gentleman, of course, they took over uh, St. James uh, uh, Discotech or yeah, which is uh, Dyson. In fact, I worked with many Dyson uh, managers when it was first started because I was also teaching the MBA program. And, <laughs> and now they told me, Casey, we not only uh, design 
for household products we design for electric cars because uh, it's generic they can use their brains to design for many things that's why i say common sense or well, because you cannot keep on designing uh, consumer products you now have to design products that is the current which is the electric cars huh? now some of you didn't realize that of course long john silver is not very good in marketing but as a design thinking concept they're good i still remember this is uh, the paper tray paper tray that they put on top of all the trays huh? uh, paper mats sorry to uh, on top of the trays when you uh, go to Long John Silver to eat. I think they stopped it already. And it was very interesting. They actually uh, entice your appetite because they said, see the gold color of your uh, fish or oh, because they sell fish products. Oh, and then the crunchiness, the smell, feel the freshness oh, of the seafood and then taste the goodness. Oh. But the common sense is that uh, in actual fact, they have one before at center point, they close down because the actual ambience is not very good. Huh? So the aesthetic value is not there. However, the quality of the food is there now. Bedok, they still have one because recently I went there. But again, I don't know how long they can last. So always remember, uh, in I stay in Pasiri, so there's a very long queue every night in one of the what you call uh, fast food, not, not, the, not the McDonald's fast food, but those uh, Western style food. And the taste is not very good, but they create that design thinking image that is value for money. So the queue, you're not talking about uh, one 10 or 20 minutes, even 45 minutes, people queue up just to eat. And these are for the younger generation because the place is interesting. You can park yourself in one of those benches and you can talk for the whole night. But they know the correct amount to give to the Generation E. That's why the queue is very long because these people have a limited budget. But then they find that, you know, have a bit of everything. This is the Western style uh, fast food that I am willing to queue up. Uh, okay. Now say that. So therefore, just change the way we think, the way we work, the way we behave, then the performance is very different. So now the alignment, huh? in of course, the normal uh, design thinking process is called define. So I was asked uh, the next question, why? Why design thinking is important, so the purpose of. Huh? So the six A's is easy to understand. Of course, this Tim Brown uh, is now the CEO of IDEO and he has written many uh, articles in Harvard Business Review. And he said, thinking like a designer is important. I totally agree. Huh? Why do I wear party tonight? Because when everywhere I go, they say, Mr. Party is Professor Chan. Because no need to look for anybody. The only Singaporean that wear a party shirt, especially Indonesian party, not any other party, that is him. No need to tell people, <laughs> people can look for me. Huh? Who is the old man who wear a party? Uh, that is Casey Chan. Huh? Now, that is also my strategy, it's easy for people to recognize me. So as it says here, in actual fact, the strategy of design thinking is to transform non-consumers to become consumers, as simple as that. Oh. And if we can understand that every one of us, if we don't have the mindset as an entrepreneur, how can we uh, actually transform uh, threats into opportunities? So now, in actual fact, uh, people used to say, Casey, you're very one kind, you know. You come to Indonesia, you ask for business class, first class, but now they say there's no need. I want to buy your time because I don't need you to fly in. I don't need, uh, somebody say you, you're very tall, you know, sweet room. I think David, uh, one of my students will know, I stay in the sweet room with him. It's not because I want to, because this is where I do my work and this is the condition that will give the best to the students because we are, we are talking about teaching rich students, not poor students. And my, the criteria is just like today, I one who wrote to me, I got a full scholarship to Tsinghua Taswe for his master's degree. This is what the parents want. The parents don't care how much they pay. My daughter can go to Tsinghua Taswe, I can show off to all my friends, bragging rights. 
So I designed for bragging rights. I've not many students. I've a few good ones. Some goes to London Business School, so the parents were happy. They say, you know, my son go to London Business School. Next one, uh, I want my younger son go to Harvard. I say, the one I cannot, uh, because the one I got no connection. Uh. So this is just to share with you that just think differently, outcome very different. Uh. So now let's talk about all this branding. Uh. So why do you think Apple always shining so bright? Because in terms of brand equity, they rank the highest, although Apple is compared to Coca-Cola is not of a longer history. Apple is like uh, 50 years old, perhaps, huh? uh, same thing as uh, Microsoft, huh? but why Apple is ahead in terms of brand equity. That means if tomorrow Apple goes bankrupt, they can still sell the brand name for this 205, because they keep on changing every month. A billion dollars, not million. Huh? Now, airlines is the same, huh? so we have Qatar Airlines that uh, now become number one uh, ahead of Singapore Airlines because of the facilities they have on the plane. Not that our SI girl doesn't look good, but the good ones also join them. <laughs> so so they, they designed the salary to attract our SI ladies, right? So therefore, design thinking is a generic word, can be used in many things, but must be used correctly. Huh? So now let's look at... Uh, the inside of the aircraft. Well, this is, ask yourself, if you are to travel business class or first class with this launch inside the A380, do you think you want to travel in this style or travel the standard style in SIA? If same price, of course, even myself, I use a lot of kata nowadays because the price is really cheaper. Huh? But the inconvenience is that you have to go to Doha. Huh? That's all. So the rest is speak for itself. Anna Airlines, those days were not so good, but now it's improving. And Cathay Pacific is always our uh, main competitor for airlines in Asia. However, cabin crew, uh, what makes Singapore girls or Singapore airline girls uh, outshine the rest? Because of the Sarum Kabaya. So there were also research done if they were to change the uniform because it's more uh, comfortable for them to wear the normal suit and shirts and brows, you know, and a brows and skirt. But then the customer says, then I don't want to travel because I love the Singapore girl, which is they are dressed in Sarum Kabaya. So no choice have to ask them. The men can uh, don't wear the Lavan uh, brand of uh, suit that they used to make by Lavan, but the ladies, no choice. But nowadays also, the Sarum Kabaya is made in Indonesia uh, by Dana Hadi. Uh, that's where I bought my batik. Because then when people ask me, how come you have wear cheap batik? Not cheap, you know, because uh, this is designed by um, Dana Hadi. Of course, the original design of SIA is Pierce Bowman. So therefore, they keep that one. And But the manufacturing is done in Indonesia now. To reduce the cost. Now, for first class uh, cabin, of course, it's SIA, but I dare not travel because uh, the first thing my wife will ask who sleep next to me. If I said nobody, then why you travel on the streets? For what? Waste money, is it? <laughs> but if for her, she said also no need to travel because save the money, she can do more shopping. So, therefore, every airline is the same. They design for the uh, top class businessman, but I'm not a top class businessman. I am still a corporate man in those days. So therefore, I cannot take the first class suite. Uh, but you will not be surprised that every flight with the first class suite is taken up. Uh, so you have to, in fact, book in advance. So therefore, SIA earns a lot of money uh, because you have to tender for it, uh, for the matter. But for premium class, Singapore is the first airline that actually understood that flying from Singapore to Houston is a long journey. Therefore, they created this premium economy class and always full because you pay uh, half of the business class, but is above uh, the economy class, but you have a longer foot room because especially those uh, Western, uh, the Caucasian, they have longer uh, feet, longer legs. So, as such, they will prefer this type of uh, arrangement. Huh? So therefore, SIA 
was enjoying uh, the leader. You see, there's no competitors, huh? and of course, other airlines now thinking about it. But thanks to COVID virus, of course, it's downside. But when it's uh, up again, I'm sure uh, myself, uh, same thing. I would like to travel SIA again because I know the safety standard is still very high. I'm not saying other people are not high, but uh, I'm a Singaporean. I have to support Singapore, Singapore Airlines. Uh, otherwise, they go further down, there are no more Singapore Airlines. Then I'll be crying my way to another country. Uh. Okay. Surprisingly, economy class SIA lose to the Japan Airlines. So, therefore, design thinking is a dynamic process. So, we have to keep ourselves adaptive all the time. Adaptive. Uh. So let's look at my first conclusion. So this brings us up to 7.45. Uh, oh. So again, uh, my slides are all designed in such a way. Uh, if some of you have questions, you post the question because uh, my style is that if I answer the question, then I got interrupted in my thinking is uh, slow down for the rest. Oh. So I will rather finish even a bit earlier, then I can answer your questions oh, if you don't mind. Oh. Okay, so therefore the conclusion is that the first part tell us that there are six senses. So what are the six senses? The five senses, which is our sight, our sound, our smell, our taste and our touch. But always remember one last thing, which is crucial, is called common sense. Common sense those days was not so common. But nowadays we need to use a lot of common sense because uh, everything is, is already using AI, otherwise uh, we will not be smarter than our AI devices. Huh? So the conclusion for the first part, awareness and alignment is that design thinking can be used in many phases, huh? including our massage chair by OSIM. So as you know, it's a billion dollar company. Singapore is very proud because uh, when you talk about massage chair, they say OSIM, huh? which means wrong SIM. Huh? Okay. Now action, action is ideate uh, in our design thinking uh, process by uh, Stanford or by MIT use the same. Huh? So how can we apply this on building up uh, competent managers, building up uh, effective leaders and also uh, nurturing uh, savvy technopreneurs? Huh? So this is Jack Mao. I think you know that he's a very, very uh, wise person. He stepped down at the right time. I don't know true or not. Uh, somebody told me he's quite sick, but of course uh, I have a soft heart for him. There's a lot of things we can learn from him. <clears throat> and his four doctorates. So I was listening uh, enthusiastically and each time his speech is very clear, do never give up, never give up. That's the only thing I remember. But how about his other uh, words, other ideas that he has uh, shared uh, during the four doctorates that he received? And in fact, I, was, I think it's more than that later on. Huh? So I wrote in the journal, this is uh, the International Journal of Professional Management, that can we actually now use nine boxes to so design thinking of knowledge into nine boxes and see how come, uh, although I was so impressed by his four speeches, but yet I can only remember less than 50% of what he said. Huh? So you may just take a look. Huh? And this is very true. This is called common sense, or huh? the last sense of design thinking. He talked about philosophy. Philosophy is depending on us some of us like philosophy, we think deep, then you say, yeah, it's very good, you know. Uh, some of us say, just follow his words of wisdom. Only one sentence, never give up, oh, and joy of sharing. So, okay, I remember too, oh, and he talked a lot about common sense. Oh, that means uh, he defined uh, industrial revolution one, he said now we talk about I1, which means that the birth of the handphone, so everybody has a handphone. I too, he talked about the birth of the Wi-Fi. So everybody has a Wi-Fi to connect to. Then I three, he talked about our GPS, our 4G. So 
and then now i4 which is internet 4 to him is the 5g which can do many many things oh that i can remember because that is the concept on the bottom right hand side of the nine boxes and his guiding princess is clear you must have your box one box two box three strategy don't put everything the same so box one up to three years box two up to six years in strategic management this was not new this is called your short term mid term long term but he make it easy for you to understand because boxes we know that like our letter boxes right whatever you want to uh, complete you just put into box one and then see whether this is strategically acceptable that means the top management whether agree or not financially sensible or not so that's where project management come in again project justification or business case justification and then the last part is really project management is tactically viable can you complete in three years or cannot must be extended to the six years so this is now your project in box one move to box two no like our bullet train is now moved into box 3.5 because 10 years cannot finish uh, due to this uh, COVID pandemic, right? And hopefully uh, this will be resolved. But again, our MRT to Johor Bahru has been more or less uh, decided or which uh, takes place. So therefore, this will become our box one to box two, depending whether there's, there's any further delay. But I would just like to say for uh, contingency uh, plan, better put it in the box two, our MRT to JB, because then we will have more uh, visitors between Singapore and Malaysia, which means our tourists from Singapore, as our hotel is so expensive, can now utilize the hotel facilities in Johor Bahru and both sides will win. No? Okay, so that I can understand. But what is missing, especially in design thinking, most courses will provide you the process, which is the five process we talked about. You know, you start from empathize, you define, you ideate, then you prototype and then you test. Huh? Tools, different product use different tools, different uh, trainer use slightly different tools depending on whether it's the uh, Stanford approach or MIT approach or there are so many others of theory that is the problem with bosses they have no theory because they are practical men you ask them for theory say I already give you the concept theory means proven no concept is try our two integrated result is a concept, it's not a theory, but when it's proven after 50 years, it's a theory. How Singapore becomes successful by operating the two integrated result. Huh? Practice, of course, don't have because the bosses got no time to show. And this is where action learning is, is about. Huh? So this is how I found the gaps. So therefore, I start to talk about design thinking for accelerated action learning, which means that Action learning is not new, learning by doing. And, but now the new term is called project management. And project management is no longer at the operations level. It connects from strategic to business to uh, operations level. So it's called organizational project management. But SME don't like that because then my company is very small. So therefore, I'm giving another talk. I must thank Linus and, of course, uh, Alan to invite me to not go physically or online uh, to uh, KL, also under IPMA, to talk about uh, actually design thinking for strategic enterprise project management. So these are suitable for SMEs. Uh, so the last part is the holistic thinking, which I invented over 18 years. That means it's still a concept, but hopefully uh, another two years is being recognized as a domain by itself. Of course, I have to have more papers written uh, with the support of other top professors to say, yeah, this is a discipline. So this is why I will share a little bit uh, today. But th for those people who come on the training, of course, you will learn that holistic thinking consists of four very important thinking skills, which is H. My is W. W stands for wise. Huh? So, W-I-S-C, not V-I-C-E. V-I-C-E is a problem right there. So uh, holistic with the H, then systems thinking, 
than uh, critical thinking, which everybody says that I need more critical thinking, but critical thinking by itself must be real time. So we try to simulate how do we apply to uh, cases that has happened and how will you resolve this issue? Which leads to lateral thinking, which is also missing. You add the four up, this is the holistic thinking. Oh. Of course, you must be able to connect. Oh. And this for 18 years out of the 18 years I was teaching at the, I was very uh, lucky to apply this at Petra Christian University. Now it's ranked number fourth in the whole of Indonesia. And when I went there, it was unknown. But it's okay. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, I got nothing to do in Indonesia. So I teach at University of Indonesia one day. I teach the other day at uh, Petra uh, to keep myself occupied. Oh. Okay. So now design thinking, the focus is thing, right? Thing, xiang, oh, xiang in Chinese. Oh. So I asked one of my very uh, qualified professor who is two PhD in Chinese language. He told me, Casey, <laughs> I leave it to you because if you are talking about academically, uh, he disagree, but practically he agree. Oh. I don't know whether this is a diplomatic answer or he just say, look here, uh, you think very differently because when industry is different. Oh. So I use the Japanese, what they taught me in Okuma, see thing, plan, do. So always, this is a company of, of course, you have a plan, do, check out, but we say no, see first because See, you must use the eyes, which is same as design thinking, sight. Think, you must use the brain. No? Then, plan is, of course, you must uh, use the brain to plan also, think and plan together. Do, you must use your heart. No? So, therefore, this is how I interpret the Chinese character of Xiang. No? So, maybe my Taiwanese friend can uh, help me to criticize and say, I have a better solution for you. So, this is how I interpret in the Western way. Uh, applied to design thinking also i go back again think think i want to change to holistic why holistic i ask a very basic question how many elements in our body five right our heart our brain our liver our kidney and our what else is missing here? our heart our brain our liver our kidney and our Lungs. Huh? Lungs. Lungs, yeah, lungs. I almost died because of the lungs. That's why I removed it already. Uh, so I got no more lungs. Uh. Oh dear. Uh, so what happened? One is not there. Finish. Finish. You cannot be a normal human being. Uh. So that's why I use the whole body system as the holistic. You must have all these five elements uh, to become a normal human being. Uh, the function well. Uh. Do we must have the traits that means our character. Same person, especially in service industry, serve, a, serve you. Why do we always go back to the same hairdresser or the same person who do the massage for us? If you are not using OC massage chair, you go to the proper massage parlor because they know where is the pain point, right? So sometimes before massage is already bad. After massage, you go to hospital, no. Because the guy, especially on foot reflexology, they press the wrong part. After that, I said, my leg injured already, don't press anymore. Because I think you cracked my bones already. Huh? Yeah, so with that understanding, we can now look at the, what we call a simple concept of design thinking. Huh? So the whole concept is about when you drive the car, the driver must have a purpose where to travel. You have the passion, which is the type of gasoline you use. In Singapore, we have Shell XO. Of course, the project is build the car, which is the engine. So in a nutshell, when I say think holistically with the W, means that success is when a person can see the future with the eyes. Don't look now, look at 10 years later. It's just like Singapore. 10 years ago, when we actually break off from Malaysia, we are nothing. But now we are 55 years old. Not that we are so grand, so special, but at least we Singapore become better. Much, much better. Of course, still not satisfied. So how can we move further with holistic thinking? Oh? This is, I hope, my aim. Oh. Everything I do free one, oh? uh, I hope so. Oh. Uh, plan for growth. So therefore, how can we grow? So this is where we have the innovation strategy. Not innovative, uh, innovation strategy means that this strategy is put into box one innovative projects which last for 
three years, box two innovative projects which last up to six years, box three innovative projects that last up to 10 years. Oh, but we need to build the passion. Passion is a character. How to build the character? Uh, this is where you need the action learning coach. And this is where you need the Lao Si, that means the teacher. This is where you need the trusted advisor in the organization. Like we said, the older people, the gray hair people, or is it gray or white? My one is uh, white already. <laughs> so, so then people trust you because you have gone through the tough time. You have proven record, but you cannot run the company because the company must be run by the younger generation because you need creative ideas. Not that the old people are not creative, but old people always have the resolution or res reserve about taking risks. But the younger generation, they are more prone to take risks and they're more willing to take risks. I'm not joking. Compare myself to my children, which is my children is 30 years old. Yeah, I'm 65, 35 years difference. They are willing to take higher risks than me. My son refused to come back. He's still in Europe. My daughter wants to go to uh, Korea because influenced too much by Korean movies. Then what happened to me? I will look for free talk, you know. Maybe I can go Nanyang Poly to talk, you know. I can go NTU to talk again, you know. Or I, can, I used to go to NTU to talk when I was uh, talking about CNC technology. Okay, enough here. Otherwise, uh, I see at the time. So now, design thinking for marriages, that looks at the different way we think, you huh? Some of us think straight like an arrow. It's good because you, this is typical project management. Define your goal, objective and target. Goal is a good intention. I want to lose weight, but I did not quantify. Objective is to stay healthy by reducing from 100 kg to 75 kg. But then is it immediately? Immediately I have to go to see a doctor and cut out my stomach. I say no, because I don't want to cut out my stomach. So therefore, what's the target? Every quarter I lose maybe five to 10 kg. Uh, so now, it becomes doable or not doable. So whoever is the health uh, advisor, the trusted advisor will tell me can or cannot know, Casey. Now, think like a GPS. What is the GPS? Of course, this is what we said, uh, like a helicopter. This is the top management. Now look at the total situation. Where is the market? Is it Asia and including Pacific or is it USA or Europe? Now, think like a radar. So which means that, like we said, the elephant, huh? the blind man touched the front, they say this is a snake, touched the ears, says a carpet, touched the tusk, well, says this is a spear, touched the body, says it's a wall, touched the leg, is a tree, and then please don't pull the tail of the elephant too hard, otherwise they are full of shit, you know. Uh, so it's called a rope. So that is very important. Look at it in different perspective. And this is the lateral thinking, which is not taught in the school. But now we have to, because in AI, they use lateral thinking. Or oh, if the AI is better than a human being, then we we'll work for the machine, you know. Uh, this is where we look at the, what you call Star Wars before. Yeah, I hope this will not happen now. Now take like an engineer, like myself, oh. I'm an engineer, so I always have to think six dimensions, right? So the front, the view, the side view, the plan, which is the top view, then the bottom view, then they say not enough, cut it into cross-sectional view. Also in total, you add up all six. These are how aircraft parts are made for the turbine engine. Oh. Now think like consultant simple, step by step. Oh. Step one, step two, step three, step four, come up with the solution. Then they say that implementation, sorry, call in the project manager. But now this cannot, you have to do all three. You it must be the consultant. That means it must be a problem solver. It must be the project manager, which is the implementer. And you must also be the agile entrepreneur, which means you have to think differently how to create the opportunity. Yes, you have the solution. Yes, the implementation, how to sustain the business. Or so think that manager is simple, plan, do, check, act, right? And act is the control. Think like a leader. So leader, <clears throat> like what we say, 
short term, mid term, long term, which means manage the present, selectively drop some of the projects, create the future projects. Oh. How about technoprenial? So, technoprenial again means that we have to now, for example, myself, um, before the pandemic, I have a very good uh, Indonesia partner called Professor Echo, graduated from Harvard Business School. And I told him, you know, now this business getting very tough. Why don't put what I teach online? He said, but you must prepare, be prepared. No, I only pay you $10 per student. I said, no problem. So during the bad times, what happened? People go online. So $10, he cannot give me more $10 because it's just $10. Uh, not for the whole diploma. I mean, per module in Indonesia is considered as for the poor people. So he gave me $1. $1 is more money. But he got 100 universities. Every month, I can receive $10,000 because I charge very cheap. This is big market. If I put to the whole world in different languages, that's why I told my colleague, maybe I can pay you $20,000 a month, but you must come up with courses that people want. That after I learn, I implement, it works. $10 is okay. I get $1 is also okay. And I have to now bring in more courses because it has to be translated into Bahasa. And who is the translator? He is, because he's a very, very good speaker. And he is actually trust advisor to the Minister of Education because all this he won't share with me until he asked me, that one is not bread money, that one is good money because it actually every dollar I have to account for it. Okay, so this is why I say because I prepare for it. Why? I didn't die in 2016 and I knew I have no more jobs to do. I have to think, I think I also shared with JJ, uh, the chairman of uh, IPMA, you know, very tough. Always remember, opportunity comes from adversity. When you're about to die, when the God gives you a second chance, I'm not a Christian, otherwise <laughs> it's starting to talk about Christianity here. Uh, then you have to think very hard, oh, that do some social entrepreneurship. So I do social entrepreneurship, oh, so that, therefore do not hesitate to contact uh, Jason if you have certain things. Uh, I don't mind two hours, this that free, oh, but then if you, Take too much of my time, I will also must be responsible to my company. Oh. So up front, I will just tell you, oh, because nowadays online very simple. Oh, I don't need to travel, so no need to pay first class or business class ticket. I don't mind a lot of things. So movies also have design thinking oh, for product positioning. So you can see James Bond movie, the design thinking is that those products they want to sell, like the Aston Martin car, the handphone they want to promote, the Apple computer they want to uh, uh, reinforce that this is what James Bond is using, the Omega watch, all these are design thinking. No? Fashion show, very standard, that's where design thinking takes place, uh, starting of uh, this concept and events as well, just like tonight, it has to go through the design thinking process before we can make this successful. Huh? Last time we don't have Malik, tonight we have so many people. Huh? And hopefully, uh, suppose we 100 people sign up, I always say is that you have to times 0 0.6 because 30% of the people will not turn up. This is normal of a frequency curve. Oh? You have 100 people who say they come, only 60 will come. Oh? You have to drop off 30%. Oh? Because due to one reason or another, they cannot uh, attend. Oh? So now as the second conclusion, oh, how and who to implement design thinking is very important. Process, yes, I know how. Who? Uh, so project management always asks the word who. You don't have who, your project will fail. You don't have who in the whole value chain of design thinking will not be successful. Come up with a very good designer who to sell. I mean, come up with a very good design, your product, how to distribute, how to sell. So sometimes all these questions are not answered. So design thinking is for the whole supply chain. What we call it nowadays, value business chain. No? You can twist and turn the word, it doesn't matter. But it's all about end to end, end to end. So this is called holistic end to end. No? So therefore, 
strategy is good, but why project management is important, you must always convert that strategy into viable projects and therefore now you can implement successfully using the project management uh, terminology or, or processes. Or. So now adoption means buy-in. Whether uh, at the end of these two hours you agree, disagree with me, so therefore I hope uh, as part of the constructive criticism, it is better to uh, apply this uh, today is only Thursday, uh, tomorrow Friday, then if tomorrow you apply not working, you tell Jason, I want my money back. Oh, then Jason said, it's free, well, how, how to pay your money? Say, my time left two hours, I spend talk, uh, listening to Casey, you know, then I drink, uh, what you call, fruit juices, so I must build, build to them. Oh. Yeah, so therefore pro tip is that if you uh, like what I said, you can apply straight away. That's how savvy it is. Huh? Otherwise, the theory is still a theory. Mine is not a theory. Mine is actually people process too. So that means uh, you are the people. So you have to look at who can uh, like-minded to allow you to implement what you have learned, uh, what I share with you today, tonight. And then now uh, is the two that I also uh, will be now discussing. Huh? Now, this is what is happening in the industry. In the pioneering stage, you need good management system. But once it's systematized, I'm talking about uh, this equation is different for SME. Uh, this is uh, a standard, uh, well-organized organization, multinational companies or uh, established companies. But if you talk about SME, different. The equation have to reverse the process. So if you are from SME, this diagram has to change to a next diagram also. Now, let's talk about management. This is what uh, people get in good managers to run, but as the company grows bigger and bigger, they lack that leadership in the com organization. They also lack that technopreneurship. So therefore, as you look at the next diagram, this is what is going to happen. Huh? During pioneering stage, it's very project-driven one because you need projects in order to survive. So therefore, you need good management. So few people, loyalty and warm, little formality, fast growth depending on how big or small is the company. When you go into systematization, you must take care of the talent, the human element, which is people-driven. Is it true, put hands on our heart, that our company groom your leadership? The answer is, I can tell you, they send you for leadership courses in London Business School. They send you to INSEAD. They send you to all the top management schools executive program, come back, what happened? You are Lone Ranger. Whatever you learn, you want to introduce, you say, hey, look here, Casey, forget it, no? We are very busy. What you learn is all the theory. And this is the fact of life. Because if you come back with the training on how to become a better leader, and if you really become a better leader, you'll be the next CEO. You think your colleague wants to accept that? Of course, no, right? So therefore, as a good leader, you must, the CEO himself, uh, that is what we say corporate university, they train the successors. And when you train the successors, I share with many of my own colleagues uh, or my, my, my partners, immediately we start the company, we need to identify a successor. So although my company is so small, but I already have a successor. And I told this successor, you start learning from me now. I also have a project manager, which I just recruited. I told her, you have to run fast because five years from now, I will not be in Singapore. I'll be sitting in China. China is still a very big market. I want to share this with the Chinese education system, but I have to first master Mandarin. So maybe I bring JJ there. <laughs> Those who speak very good Mandarin, my Mandarin not very good, but this is the joy of sharing. Okay, now say, so now go into the last part, design thinking for culture driven. So Asian culture easier. I also invited as we think professor to Glasgow U, to UK, but then it's very tough, very tough because uh, I'm not still used to the Western society. That's why uh, when I was six months in Canada, I decided to come back because I cannot fit into the culture. So I, don't mind, I missed the promotion. 
I still love Asia, so I will do most of my work here. But if you want to fight the war, you cannot stay in Singapore because the big market is Indonesia. So every fortnight I go to Indonesia, that's why I don't have to worry about Indonesia. I have uh, 18 years of uh, education experience with my students, so therefore I also can rely on two person, Dr. Henke and Professor Echo, to help me to do the advocate, uh, to advocate uh, holistic thinking. Singapore, I just uh, not long ago, so now I'm trying to uh, penetrate to discuss this topic with uh, our local education system, whether they are open or not, I don't know. And but definitely Malaysia, oh, because my external examiner for one of my courses is a uh, Dato. So I yeah told him seminars, and of course December already is although online, but perhaps there are people who are listening to it. Oh. Okay. So this is what I said. As an individual, you cannot do many things. Oh, but. One person cannot carry a lot of weight. Three person can, five person can. So from a capable individual to become a team leader in project. So when you do multiple projects and when you are able to utilize your whole brain, that is when you become a competent manager, then you can move to the next level of training. We call it action learning training. That means learning by doing. So you can become an effective leader. And this is the time that you have to groom your successes oh? because you cannot groom a, a person over one year it has to be five to ten years depending how senior this person is going to take over that position oh? and when you step down it's best to become a trusted advisor so nowadays uh, indonesia has the policy 55 years old you have to step down but singapore is up to 67 years old so i think what we should do is that those who are 55 you still have uh, get very good uh, remuneration, but then you step aside, let the younger generation come out. So that means somebody 45 who become the CEO. Now it's already happening uh, in Singapore. And then up until 55, he retires again. But if you have smaller units, strategic business units, you can have more uh, CEOs to be trained. So in this case, you can move very fast if you want to expand your business. Or, okay. So that's the design thinking concept, as I said, not just limited to product. Or so it actually can be uh, applied in many, many facets. Or. So this is what I say at 20 to 30 years old, you are in cable. This is normal, not you are on the uh, fast track for promotion. So this is the normal person, 20 to 30 years old, you are a capable individual. So 30 to 40, you are the general manager of the company. 40 to 50, you are either the VP, and then senior VP or even COO before 60 years old. And after 60, that is why to curb down the jobless people for PMETs. Many PMETs are very well qualified or very experienced. You make them the trusted advisor. So this is something that uh, our government must recognize that these people are very good, but retrain them and then let them become trusted advisor, not only in Singapore. A lot of people actually uh, want to have good manufacturing system in Vietnam, in Indonesia. Indonesia is just across uh, the Straits, which is Bat not Batam. Uh, Batam is for a different reason. <laughs> uh, uh, Pekambaru or this uh, uh, Pekambaru or Palimbang. Palimbang uh. So there's some of this manufacturing industry for the oil and gas people. And we have very good uh, plant manager from uh, the oil uh, and gas industry uh, working in, I mean, holding good position before. And this could be the trusted advisor. Huh? So I think there's something needs to change the landscape of our uh, grey hair people. I mean, the Madiga people, uh, still they can serve all this uh, industry huh? rather than uh, every day complaining, you know, uh, I lost my job and I'm not joking. I, uh, on last week, uh, Saturday, when I traveled from my place to Shenton Bay, the taxi driver just got retrenched from China, nine years there, 20, uh, earning $20,000 a month, Who a CPA, graduate from NUS, business in accountancy and a certified public accountant, MBA from uh, Manchester U, my taxi driver, 
speak good English, speak strategy, but he don't have a job. So I told him, you better go and register yourself. <laughs> Otherwise, nobody knows that a talented person like you is without a job. Okay, now say, so assurance means that, well, how can you apply this and how can you use uh, design thinking to achieve the high performance culture? So this is the test. Uh, look at all these people. Uh, they're the top 10 most MRCOs in the world. And what do they say? The reason why our company is number one is because of the superior execution of projects. I'm not selling for IPMA because I myself uh, is very committed that if you can master project management, you can do many things faster, better, and smarter. So that's why I think the core competency of all managers should be project management. Yeah. Now, our friend just passed away, Jack Welch, uh, formerly from GE. And he also started his own uh, Jack Welch Institute of Management. Huh? And he said it correctly because uh, he is the disciple of uh, Peter Trucker. When he took on the position as CEO and chairman of General Electric, he spent three full days in the residence of uh, the late Peter Trucker. And Peter Trucker taught him all the axioms that he needs to know because uh, Jack Well actually has got his PhD in chemical engineering. Oh. So he says, okay, uh, what cannot, we can only improve or manage what can be measured. So this is the first step of what we say after you empathize, you define, you have to make all these things measurable. Otherwise, you don't know what to improve on. Oh. Now, this is in 1994, the top professor at uh, Harvard, and he says that, well, in his paper, Make Projects the School for Leaders. Exactly this is the name of his paper. I was also a student. Uh, I just finished another PhD at that time at Strathclyde, and I have four topics to write on. And therefore, I was so amazed with his article. And he, this article is targeting for how to teach leadership. So you have three types of projects, lightweight, medium, and heavy projects. That is what he emphasized in his article in the Harvard Business Review. And this is how you decide who is the better CEO. Because why? A good CEO is not only himself, is able to transform the organization culture to become a high performance culture, which is the execution capability of that organization. Whether people like the CEO or not, doesn't matter. It's just like Steve Jobs. Many people don't like him, but he turned the company around and he came up with projects like, of course, the first one is the iMac, then it goes into the iPod, then it goes into the iPad, then it goes into the iPhone. And that what changed the whole fortune of Apple. Oh, okay. All these are projects. This is the gentleman who wrote the book I keep mentioning, In Search of Excellence. So 30, five years later, it's still valid. Although people criticize him, but <laughs> he's proven in the last, uh, what you call top management award, that lifetime achievement. No? And he says the same. As an individual, I don't want to read the top one. No? Look at the individual, you must have the ability to perform. So all of us must be a good project manager. Then, now, you uh, form a bigger team. So as a team, that means not just your company's team. We call this the cross-organizational team. I have a government project. I uh, outsource to Apple, to IBM. IBM, of course, is software. To uh, Microsoft, to Dell. Dell also make computers. Oh, and you have to work together because this is for our next, uh, I'm just talking, uh, not, not real one, uh, uh, digital transformation for ABC uh, project, government project. Huh? So all of you have to work as a team. You cannot say that I'm, Apple, I'm better than uh, Dell, I'm Dell, I'm better than uh, IBM in software development. No. So this is called cross organization project. But how about cross country project? Singapore, Malaysia. Singapore, Indonesia, Singapore, uh, 
China. So this is where the organization who is going to take up this project must have this culture of performance. So process has no culture barrier because process is process. I'm the process owner, it's my turn, I do it. But when you start to talk about culture differences, it becomes an issue, it becomes a challenge. Your culture and my culture is different. As somewhere when I go to Indonesia, 11 o'clock, the people go for the prayer. Singapore is different timing. But Indonesia very simple, 11. All have to be released. On, I think Wednesday or Thursday, they go for the theory of the Pancha Sirat. That means the values of the country. Singapore, we don't have values. That is the question that University of Indonesia student asked me. Casey, what is the value of a Singaporean? I cannot answer. I said, can I check the Google and I look for Lee Kuan Yew? Don't have cosmopolitan values because we don't actually teach these values. And this is very true, but we are 55 years now. So maybe over the next few years, we have to clearly identify what are the values the Singaporeans, of course, Gyasu is standard one, right? The one but cannot write like that all oh, in the in the international arena, then people laugh at us. Oh. But you can say is that we are uh, risk averse. Ah, okay, the one fine. Oh. Okay. So now back to the summary. Mention is how do we allocate critical resources? Entrepreneurship, how do we do strategic transformation? How many competent managers we need? How many effective leaders we need? How many savvy entrepreneurs we need in this company in order to move to the next level? All SME never think like that. So my prediction, my, my specialty is actually I teach international business management. If you look at international business management over the next few years, it's going to be very, very different because it was from seven forces of globalization now increased to 14 forces times two, you know, times two means that the whole world is transforming very fast. I came up with the first seven forces, but there's a top professor from NGS. He came up with the recent seven and the pandemic was already forecast, but only they don't know how to name it. They call it unknown, unknown risk. But now they can put the word there already, pandemic, uh, yeah, so therefore, this will affect the 13 business life cycle of every organization. So when you know these two, every night I cannot sleep, you know, because uh, there were a lot of SME going to bankrupt end of this year. And it's very true because they don't have a strategy. They don't have box one, box two, box three solutions. They have limited money in the bank then you have to close the organization. This is not new. This is called the law of survival. This is called rationalization. After rationalization, that means everything will have to start all over again because of industry 4.0, but this is being accelerated because of the pandemic. So everything, everyone has to go into a paradigm shift. Otherwise, it's finished. Your company will be finished. Second class, third class university in USA have to close down. No? Okay, so leadership is high performance culture. So this is something that easy said them done. So the important uh, measurement, as I said, Jack Well just said three values, three A's also. When you talk about integrity, it's good, but integrity must be converted into something measurable. Huh? Accountability is a measurement of integrity. Attitude is also a measure of whether uh, you are a trustworthy person or not, huh? because you have the right attitude. People tell you to improve, you will improve. Huh? Action means that don't wait until next year, do it now. Huh? So this is, we look at the inverted uh, pyramid, which I mentioned. So design thinking for execution capability must not only rest with the individual, but the team. And you just saw the top 10 most MR CEOs, they said, must be for the organization. Huh? So now I've uh, shared with you the concept of design thinking. 
this is a generic uh, so i always discuss generic things so it can apply to any types of environment i won't say 100 percent, but maybe 80 90 percent so concept is that in design thinking you must focus on an innovation strategy as somebody myself if somebody asked me casey what is so unique about your organization i said there's only one thing i sell holistic thinking what is holistic thinking total solutions approach to change the way you think work behave and perform then the rest i can share with you that it applies to management improving management uh, skills applied to leadership skills enhancing leadership skills and applied to uh, increasing your passion for entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship is a process oh? okay but what is the end game oh the competence you get is execution capability that means last time uh, you take 10 days to do, do the job now you take five days so i tested on the mba program if you use my method two hours you finish the case study you use other methods you take the whole day so how about two hours case study two hours case study uh, mini case study finished in 45 minutes not one time every time that's why the Petra students shook NTU when they grabbed the prize as the sec first running up for the CIBM competition in Malaysia last year yeah so NTU supposed to be number three number one I uh, is Malaysia because Malaysia will put their own uh, I think MU whatever first or so therefore they ask uh, <laughs> Petras the who is a professor they say KC Chapa is from Singapore no <laughs> okay now say uh, so now the whole thing is as I said the change the way we think uh. now these are the four types of thinking uh. lateral thinking is the foundation this is Albert de Bono but use it in a different way uh for effective analysis so this is where you give everyone a chance it is uh, better than brainstorming brainstorming you need the facilitator huh? so lateral thinking you need templates after that you put all together you still need the facilitator but this facilitator can be trained one time and then they can do it already huh? holistic thinking is effective planning because you have to uh, assemble the pieces together into a bigger plan System thinking is more on project management, effective control, and critical thinking is effective decision making. All these are having tools to be able to carry out, otherwise, it's no use. Oh. Then, eventually, your Lean Six Sigma or Lean Sigma management is improved continuously. So, therefore, at the end result of any designing thinking. Uh, project you must increase the ability to integrate the ability to implement and the ability to innovate better huh? so now holistic is to integrate system to implement clicker is to innovate and natural thinking is to improve right these are the tools that i design or specifically this is very simple one simple one so for awareness you must ask what is this design thinking project why do we need this design thinking project who is involved in this design thinking project and how do we do it then you go into the alignment that means what is the purpose of this project the scope of this project so you can see straight away project management what is the strategy we deploy is it operational excellence to arrive at best cost is it product leadership to arrive at best performance or is it a uh, total customer experience to arrive at uh, total solutions then who are the stakeholders for people the resources as a support the organization structure of course always i uh, prefer to recommend the projectile structure and then the process so i will also say maybe the six a's will help us you, it's different uh, uh, condition use different process but normally i will have my own 6A schedule, start and finish with the milestone and system. Where is the balance scorecard? If you don't have a balance scorecard, you don't know what is you see at the below assurance, you don't know the key performance indicators. Then we are again 
uh, doing something that's not measurable. Huh? The next action is first you have to strategize, implement, and then operate, and that is the balance scorecard. And you have to make sure that do not execute unless you know what to monitor and control. Now the adoption means buy-in. You must listen to different aspects of people. So these are different professionals. White hat are the accountants, engineers, lawyers. Red hat are people who are very passionate. Maybe the entrepreneurs, those with the entrepreneurial spirit in them. Red hat, uh, these are risk uh, uh, expert or people who are pessimistic. Uh, yellow hat is the sales and marketing people. Green hat are the R&D, the technology. So, and also, um, if the inventor like Steve Jobs is also green hat, so one person can have two hats. So, and finally, the strategist himself. That means the CEO must be the blue hat. No? Now you transform into your goal, objective, and target. So goal, you must ask five times why. From the 14 forces of globalization to the competitive advantage of nation to your industrial attractiveness to your company uh, sustainableness and then now go ahead or stop the project. Huh? Now then you come up with the five what next then you develop your five key performance indicators. Huh? But once you want to launch the design thinking, you also project, I mean project, design thinking project, you must look at the risk related to political risk, cultural risk, financial or market risk. Huh? This is not exhaustive, this is just an illustration. Huh? So now I think as a summary, this is how I normally uh, talk about to make people fully understand what I might discuss. So this six process is to assure you and also remind you what did I discuss until now. So manager, leader, technopreneur, these are people. However, we can have more managers, more leaders and more technopreneurs through the process of management, leadership and technopreneurship because then we can train and nurture these people. Alignment. Design thinking is actually from MIT point of view. So I attended the postgraduate diploma, MIT, Columbia and Dartmouth College. It's an innovation strategy. So they differentiate from the Stanford uh, approach. I also did the Stanford program, but then it's very different. So I would rather use this, this one I learned from the MIT. Uh, to develop a pipeline of capable individual team capacity and organization capability, because this on, is on a bigger scale. It's not only on a product, this is on an organization. Huh? And design thinking is to convert that innovation strategy, that's where your project management comes in, into a portfolio of prioritized programs and projects for successful execution. Huh? Because it's easier to have apple to apple comparison when you go to the lowest common denominator called a project, because project is managed by scope, schedule and cost. And of course, quality is the deciding point. Oh. And next one is that in adoption buy-in. Why do people support this value innovation strategy? Because you are able to transform like the Koreans, the Korean cars, the Korean Korea consumer electronics, complex and expensive products into simple and affordable ones. And that is the key message, you know, which people say is called innovation, disruptive innovation. Innovation thinking, this is uh, another of my topic, will lead to disruptive innovation. But first you must think before you can have the actual result. Huh? Now, uh, Tim Brown already mentioned, the assurance is that you come up with a new product. So you are able to transform non-consumers to become consumers. If 10 years ago, I talked about holistic thinking, people said, Casey, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, but I always say the same thing. When you are in pain, when you're suffering, someone give you a medicine, take or don't take. You take, you die, you don't take, also you die. I was in that situation in the Indonesian company. Take, because take, I have 50% chance of either 
dying or survive. Take. Last time I approached SME, they said, I'm trying to come see me. I don't know what you're talking about. Now I approach them and say, Casey, help me because I am going to go bankrupt already. So therefore, holistic thinking only works when people are in crisis. I totally agree. But why must you work under the last week until the last day then you accept this concept? Why can't uh, we now share this concept and see who embark on this journey and learn together? No? So therefore, the end result is that the anticipation was never in the design thinking equation is that how can we now use project management, which is called project-based accelerated action learning. So this is the thing that I did my fourth doctorate on. Accelerated action learning. Under, under a professor that owns three castles in Scotland. So as I said, if the professor only drive a Mr. Bean mini club man, don't learn from him. If the professor become so rich and doing social entrepreneurship in tourism industry in Scotland, I learned from him. Then you know it works. Oh. So this is the lady I actually uh, took my concept, which is uh, uh, Professor Cantor. Her first book is on chain management, but then nobody reads her book now because it was a very thick book. Oh. He wrote later on this uh, world class. So which means that if you want to be a world class company, you must have a good concept. Good concept means innovation strategy. Competence means execution capability. Connections means use the AI internet of things for superior, supreme performance because why? You can outsource anything you cannot do better now. You can do global sourcing. Huh? But we have to change. If we don't change, which our character does not allow. So always remember uh, the former Lee Kuan Yew says that if you are above 41 years old, very difficult to change. So somebody asked me, why do you think this is true? Because I said every speech he's made, he has gone through the whole process of checking. He will not say something that's not real. So he must have somebody who went through and checked the actual facts that when we reach 41 years old, it's difficult for us to change. So anybody that's below the, the 41 years old, easier to change. I don't say cannot change. I say more difficult to change. So therefore, now this is the, I think last slide already. Huh? <coughs> this is my slide, which I want to share with you. A lot of smart people around. I'm not joking. I meet a lot of more qualified and smarter people than me. When I was in Indonesia, all my right hand, left hand, all must have PhD one. And the guy graduated from first degree, Berkeley second, Harvard third degree, and my uh, no third degree even better, Wharton from McKinsey. I told him, I know you are very smart. You have intellectual capital. I know you are very cool. You are asking me when I going to give you my position. I know you are very sociable because you go around bad mouthing me. But I ask him one thing: Are you, Mister Harvard? You are a graduate of Harvard, but you do not represent Harvard. So please humble yourself. <laughs> I said, I send you to the plantation. Uh, if you survive, uh, you come back, you take my position. Uh, if you go to plantation, uh, the snake bite you, you die. Uh, you don't come back uh, because we have to send the evidence there to collect your bones. Uh. Yes, very qualified, but cannot deliver. So I learned the next sentence. Show me, then tell me. Don't talk all the big theory. Show me first. Uh, then you can tell me you graduate how I'm scared. The time I'm very scared with you. So brand leadership is very unfortunate. I work for IBM. I work for Microsoft. But you're not Bill Gates. Sorry. You're not Tim Cook. Sorry. So humble ourselves. So nowadays you have humble leadership as design thinking. Can you believe it? Design thinking for humble leadership. Uh, so who I am is very important. That is first stage of our life. But when you become more and more experienced, transformation must take place. So now transformation in Singapore must take place. You must look at how we change the way we think, work, behave and perform through holistic thinking with the H, 
system thinking, critical thinking, and then natural thinking. So now all this is embedded inside. That's what I learned over my research called project-based accelerated action learning. We learn best when we are doing projects, especially cross-cultural. People with different nationality, very tough to manage them, but we have to adapt ourselves so that we can manage them. And if we emerge better, that means our core competence is that people pay us as an expert, so it's called expert power. Oh, that means people recognize you are the subject matter expert. People know your adaptive power. When I go to China, I go to Indonesia, I don't run the project. I become the trusted advisor for the project. The local should be the one that you groom. Day one, I tell the investors already, I'm only here for the first three years. I groom the people, so I will be fully responsible if the project is not successful. But if the project is successful, promote this guy, eventually take over my position as the executive director. Because I don't want. Otherwise, you pay me for nothing. No? So communication power must be heart to heart. When you speak the truth heart to heart, nobody can challenge you. And this is something that is very important, not always through the internet. So face-to-face -face meeting is important. Even, okay, you can have online discussion, but at the end of the day, you still need the final one, heart to heart talk. No? And then this is where you, people give you a leadership brand. That means when they talk about this person, they know this person is something that you can trust because not only he delivers, but he develops uh, what you want to be helped. So as a conclusion, I cannot change the world. We all cannot change the world, oh, nor Donald Trump, oh, but we can change how people think, work, behave, and perform.